Hello and welcome back to the new topic databases. This is topic 9 and this is video 1 and we're going to be looking at single table databases. And this is for IGCSE Computer Science. As you can see we're going to be looking at single table databases, in particular fields, records and validation. Okay, so what is a single table database? Well, a database is a structured collection of data. It allows people to organize, extract specific information in a way that meets their needs. The data can include text, include numbers, pictures, anything that can be stored in a computer. For example, we have a database here for a, for a vet surgery. And you can see we've got some cats stored under, um, under the name pets. We've got the names of the animals, names, names of the pets. We've got photos of the pets, um, the breed of the particular animal, um, how old the animal is, whether it's a male or a female. Um, who the owner is and a contact phone number. So all this information has been stored in this particular table which we call a single table database. Okay, um, We also use um, relational databases where two or more tables are linked together but not in the IGCSE, this is for A level and IB. Okay, Why a database is useful? Well they're certainly more useful than carrying lots and lots of books around. It means we could store lots and lots of information all in one place. E.g. records of how many students are registered in a school or how many different items are sold in a shop. Data is usually collected through a form on a computer. If any changes or additions are made it only has to be done once. Data is consistent. The same data can be viewed and used by everybody who has access um, to that particular database. Only one file is needed. Okay, and people can amend and delete things, um, whatever the access rights have been given to them. Data is only stored once in a database, which means no duplication of information. And I'll explain more about that shortly. Okay, so here we go. We've got a, a hospital database, one about um, COVID-19 vaccines. Okay, so what do we use databases for? Well, not just hospitals, not just vet surgeries. We can use them for patients in a hospital, yes. We can use them for pupils in a school, we can use them for cars being sold or car parts or anything really being sold in a shop. We can use them for books in a library and we can use to store information about events. So people making hotel bookings or concert bookings or even results of, um, of races. So in this example we've got a unique ID number for each particular person. We've got the name of the person who's going to get the vaccine, um, what dose they've had. Um, what the date of birth is and whether or not they are over 65 or not. Okay, so let's try and break this down a little bit further into what a database actually consists of. So here are the, as, are the key components. We've got entities which are sort of single elements, single cells in the database table, such as the surname of this particular person is Barker. Okay, um, attributes, details, further information about that particular um, that particular cell, that particular entity, such as whether it's a, a, a text field or whether it's a date or whether it's a number. Okay, the fields are the things, the columns that are running down. Okay, so we can see this field is the date of birth of everybody in our particular database. Okay, and the four names of every person in our particular database. Now, we've got a record which is a single row which is all the information about that particular thing or person. For example, Philip Barker, this is his student ID, we've got his date of birth, we might have um, what's his favourite food in the canteen, we might have what lessons he goes to, who his teachers are, how tall he is, how much does he weigh, all this other information but will all be stored on one row with different fields supporting each of the things I've just said. The table is all of the information, all the fields and all the records together. The primary key, this thing down here, is a unique identifier. So we might have more than one Philip Barker in the school. We've got them both here, look. Philip Barker and Philip Barker. Both born on the same date, but yeah, this is this Philip's unique number and this is this Philip's unique number. So that's the primary key, a unique identifier. I'll just wait for the plane to go over. We're sat in an airport today. The final part of this video, and yes it's a short one, I want to cover validation and verification. Now if you've watched 
more of my videos you will know that, ver that this was covered this topic was covered in topic 7 algorithm design and problem solving and it's exactly the same um, validation is the same it's for checking that the correct type of data has been entered and verification checks that the data is actually the data that you want okay for example validation checks that a postcode has been entered in the correct format so depending on the country the right combination of letters and numbers have been entered and verification checks that the postcode being entered is the correct postcode so if somebody types in a postcode for somewhere in South Wales for example they don't really want to get the postcode which is from somewhere up in Scotland so it's good to do verification checks with two people entering the same data a verification check will see if both sets are the same if there are differences the check will bring up an error message and ask for the data to be re-entered various examples of these checking methods exist so for example we have range which is basically if we're entering somebody's age we don't we want to sort of maybe stop at age 5 to 100 there's nobody a thousand years old so we'll, we'll have a range between two different numbers um, a length check will be the amount of numbers or letters in a particular for that particular data so a passport number might have 10 different um, 10 different numbers a type check where what type of data has been entered whether it is a number whether it is another plane a type check maybe um, whether it's boolean um, you sort of given a yes or no answer whether it's a date field whether it's um, a character field or a text field um, a presence check to make sure that the data has actually been entered so if if somebody leaves that field blank it's going to say no 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 i want you to put some information in please and then we've got format checking and um, and checking the digits okay more of this information can be can be found in topic 7 algorithms as i've just said so a little activity this have taken for this is this i've sort of loosely taken from an example in a textbook state what fields would you expect to find in each record for the doctor's appointments and give each field a suitable name so I've got my doctor in the hospital and he's got an appointment register table so it's created a database with a ID number of the patient the name of the patient the time the patient had their appointment the duration of the appointment the length of the appointment the date that person if they were admitted into the hospital and the number um, the bed number of where they are on the hospital ward okay and I've given them the specific names all one word but just so they're easy to identify because we can't fill a database with all these big titles so that's it that is it for this first video i'd like to say thank you for watching and i will see you next time where we're going to cover more about data types in video two please continue to ask questions leave your comments hit notifications and please subscribe and finally if you wish to buy me a coffee i'd be truly grateful please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone thank you very much indeed See you next time. Bye for now.